this is the Amori Iceberg. Amori is a psychological horror game about the titular character Amori and the adventures with his friends in the fictitious world known as Headspace. All of it is dreamed up by a boy named Sunny who goes out and finally confronts reality after having locked himself away for so many years. This is, of course, a very poorly constructed synopsis of the game, but there's a lot to unpack, but hopefully you get the idea. By the way, before we go any further, I just want to say that I highly recommend you either play this game for yourself or watch a let's play of it first if you haven't already because it really is one of those games that you can only fully experience once and the iceberg will contain heavy spoilers for the game but i'm sure you knew that already this iceberg isn't super long either so that's pretty nice Finally, there are some entries I'm just not going to bother talking about because I really don't think they're necessary. Like, some of these entries are just talking about certain fan-made ships or something that can be attributed to literally any other community or game. I'd rather talk about stuff that would actually inform you on things surrounding the game or community and not waste time on entries that really aren't interesting or don't have anything noteworthy to say about them. That's about it, so let's get started. White Space. White Space is the first area of the game that you're thrown in as you begin. It is a small void that Amori lives in and serves as the gateway to the rest of Headspace. It mainly serves as the transition location whenever Sunny in the real world falls asleep in which you can access the rest of Headspace this way. Ultimately, White Space was created within Sunny's mind along with Amori to serve as a getaway from reality and responsibility. Omocat. Omocat is the creator of Amori and has been working on Amori-related projects since 2011. Omocat would eventually begin production on the game of Amori in 2013 or 2014, and it took about six years to fully develop and release. There was a lot of history with Omocat and Amori, but that's the general idea anyways. 2014 trailer. Back when Amori was initially being made, a trailer for it was made in 2014, and it looks a lot different than the game as it was released. The art style is radically different, there are a bunch of small things laid out throughout the trailer that were scrapped or not included, and everything was pretty much just remade or replaced by the the time the actual game came out. Bowen. Bowen is a composer who made a few tracks for the game, perhaps the most well-known song that Bowen composed, not for the game, but is included in the game anyways, is the song titled My Time, which is used during the credits for the bad ending. Other than that, Bowen only made two other tracks for the game, those being Tussle Among Trees and Splintered Sweets in the Castle, both of which kind of slap, not gonna lie. Good or True Ending. The good ending, sometimes paraphrased as the true ending, is an ending in a mori in which Sunny successfully relearns the truth and defeats his alter ego Amori. He then goes on to finally tell his friend the truth about what happened to Marie. This is usually seen as the canonical ending of the game as many extensions and fix that are written using Amori often use this ending as its baseline. Bad Ending, Basil Ending. These refer to the other two endings you can get in Amori. In the bad ending, Sunny loses his fight against Amori, and in a last effort to protect Sunny from the truth, he controls Sunny's body and makes Sunny commit suicide by jumping off of the hospital building. As in the previous night, a fight between both Sunny and Basil led to them both getting sent to the hospital. The Basil Ending is an ending in which, after Sunny discovers the truth inside of Basil's house, the player can decide to save Basil or not not to. If the player decides not to, then Basil will kill himself off screen, triggering the Basil ending. Depending on a few other things on your playthrough, Sunday will either move away from his house the following day, or he will have also killed himself in his own house. Some people actually see that the Basil ending is usually worse than the actual bad ending, which yeah, safe assumption. Amori route. So in Amori, there are two main routes the player can take for the game. This occurs when the player wakes up on three days left and they are met with a decision to either open the door for Kel or not to. Not opening the door for Kel will lead to the Amori route occurring, which usually makes the headspace segments a lot more complex and filled with content, while the real world segments involve Sunny just doing his chores and that's it. Sunny route. On the other end of the spectrum, if Sunny decides to open the door for Kel on three days left, then the real world segments change completely with actual quests and regathering with your old friends and all that stuff on the expense of getting some headspace content cut out. This route of course leads to the events of most of the endings in the game. Hikikomori. So the term Hikikomori, which is a pretty popular term in Japan, refers to an individual, usually a teenager or young adult, 
who withdraws themselves from any social interaction, usually staying inside of their homes or their parents' homes for months or even years sometimes. That should probably sound familiar to anyone who's played the game. In fact, the name Amori was literally just grabbed from the last letters of the term Hikikomori, and some people will sometimes refer to the Amori route as the Hikikomori route. Plushies with a smiley face. Amori has a lot of merchandise, and one of these are plushies of the Headspace characters. These plushies are extremely loved throughout the community, so much so that when the plushies initially released, they were sold out within hours. It's not hard to see why though, I mean they're just so scrunkly. Overwhelming amount of memes. Throughout the game's lifetime, it has garnered an overwhelming amount of recurring memes. We have such classics like Ayo the Pizza Here, Oyasumi, Clothes, Basil as a Watermelon, and of course, every Kel meme is canon. Kel Nuke. This refers to a strategy that can be done in headspace known as the Kel Nuke. To perform this strategy, the player must first give Kel coffee, which increases his speed by like a lot. Then Kel has to use the flex skill, which causes his hit rate to increase, as well as do more damage on the next attack. For even more efficiency, the player can make Kel happy or ecstatic, which gives him a higher chance to deal critical damage. Finally, have Kel do the run and gun skill, which lets Kel attack, but he does damage based on his speed rather than his actual attack. The result? You just fucking murder people. This strat does so much damage that I'm honestly surprised it didn't get patched. Title screens. Depending on where you are in the game or what ending you just got, the title screen for when you go to the title screen will change. Normally it'll just be this, but for example, if you're in black space and go to the menu, it'll change to this instead. There's also one for if you're in the red space or one day left for some reason. One for the bad ending where, yeah, he's just gone, and one for the good ending which changes to this. Basil hate. You're probably going to find a lot of people who just hate Basil in the community. Most people usually associate it with Basil's part in the truth and his response of keeping it a secret for so long, but I've also read some people just hate him because they just hate his character, they hate his personality, period. I'm not one to say who you are and aren't allowed to like as characters, but if you do like Basil, just be wary when traversing the community. You're probably gonna find a lot of hate for him. Hero Marie. Hero Marie is the ship for Hero and Marie. In the game, it's pretty much established that Hero and Marie were dating before the incident, and it's pretty much the only ship that is even canon at all. Toxic fandom. As with any fandom, the Amori fandom is usually considered to be a pretty toxic fan base. To a degree, anyways, it was actually pretty tame for a while, at least from what I heard, but recently the more toxic side of the fan base has begun showing itself more and more. R slash Amori. R slash Amori is the subreddit for Amori. On the subreddit, you will find a bunch of stuff like art, memes, of course, and discussion of the game in general. However, you're also going to find a lot of spoilers there, meaning lots of of new people go on the subreddit and then just instantly get themselves spoiled from the game. It got so bad that literally anything that could potentially lead to a spoiler now needs to have a mandatory spoiler tag, but it doesn't do much I don't think. You're just better off finishing the game yourself. Trust me, it really isn't that hard. Red Hands. The Red Hands could be referring to two different things. First, Amori can learn a move in the game known as Red Hands, which is used in combat, but in the game, mainly in both white space and black space, there are entities only known as red hands that upon interaction will send Amori back into the main area of both spaces. Duet. Sometimes known as Final Duet, this is a song that Sunny plays during the tail end of his fight against Amori near the end of the game. This was the song both Marie and Sunny were going to play at their asylum before the incident took place. Many people often claim this as one of the best pieces of OST in the game, and the scene that accompanies this song often makes people tear up, me included, so that also plays into things. Feed AG. Feed, who I'm just gonna call on here is a YouTube channel with a few hundred thousand subscribers. They're one of the most popular Amori content creators. They made a lot of meme videos and dumb fun stuff like that, but they recently started to make more commentary style videos surrounding Amori and other types of content in general. Drip. Apparently, there is a pretty popular genre of Amori memes where the characters just have drip. I haven't really seen many of these kinds of memes though. Maybe it was just like an early instance of Amori memes and I'm just stupid. Console ports. Amori was ported to the Switch and PS4 on June 17, 2022. These ports included some exclusive port content like boss fights and a new boss rush section featuring Basil as a playable character, among other things that I probably missed. I haven't played the ports obviously, nor have I seen much 
much from them, so I don't think it applies much to me. Basil is a femboy or gay. A very popular take you'll see in the community is that Basil is a femboy or is at least gay. So many people think Basil is gay, it's funny. The most popular point of evidence is Basil's over-obsession with Sunny that is definitely prevalent throughout the game. However, I don't think it necessarily means that he's like romantically attracted to him or anything. Plus, Basil is just a generally attached person in general. He's super attached to all his friends and his memories and all that other stuff too. I'm not saying he's gay, but I'm also not saying he's not gay, you know? See what I did there? But yeah, that's a really popular headcanon. If Basil saw the amount of people who thought he was gay, he'd probably be terrified. 2014 Kickstarter. So when Amori had begun production in 2014, a Kickstarter was made alongside its conception. The Kickstarter made about $203,000, which shattered it, the original goal of $22,000. However, since this game took a long time to release from the time the Kickstarter was made, a few people actually thought the game and its Kickstarter was a scam, considering how much money was made off of it. Well, the game came out, and it's really fucking good, so yeah. Late motifs. Similarly to Undertale, a lot of Amori's OST has a lot of late motifs to itself. Throughout the game, several different OSTs will often share similar tunes to one another, and sometimes just be different renditions of the OST themselves, like several different versions of Marie's theme that exist in the game, or several different versions of Basil's theme in the game. WTF value. Alright, so a WTF value is a value programmed into the game that generates after a new game has been made. This value, once it's been created, never changes after you've made a new game, so whatever it brings up as, you're stuck with it for the rest of your playthrough. A WTF value can generate a number between 1 and 13, and like I previously said, this value is permanent to your playthrough. Okay, so how WTF values actually work is depending on how high your value is, certain events in the game are made to trigger when they usually don't. So for example, if your WTF value is equal to or greater than 2, this guy will appear in the game at a specific point. But if it's only equal to 1, he won't appear at all. And this goes for not just characters, but events, jump scares, dialogue, and all sorts of stuff as well. And there's a lot of events that are controlled by the WTF values. Mirror jump scare. In headspace at any time, if you interact with any of the mirrors, there is a very small chance that this animation will play shortly after looking at the mirror. On the iceberg, it says that it's only after you've defeated Pluto Expanded, which is a boss in the game, but I could definitely swear people got the jump scare earlier than this, but don't quote me on that, obviously. Blacker Space, often referred to as Black Space 2, which is also what I'm just going to call it from here on out. This is a section of the game that can only be accessed under very specific circumstances when the player is in Black Space. Black Space too in itself is very big and very ominous. I'll be talking about more specific things in Black Space 2 later down the iceberg. Amori takes place in the 1990s. Throughout the game, while it's not explicitly stated at all, there is very heavy implication that the game takes place somewhere in the 1990s. For starters, the game features sort of 1990-esque things like tree houses and there's also no existence of cell phones or any kind of cellular technology at all, plus the existence of bigger, bulkier televisions and wire telephones are often seen in the game. Finally, we even got a couple of Dragon Ball Z references that occur in the game, which is an anime that ran throughout the entirety of the 1990s. So while it isn't concrete, there is very heavy evidence that the game takes place in the 1990s somewhere. I fucking love air conditioning. Yes, that's the actual name of the entry. So in the section Humphrey, if you talk to this NPC in the marina segment of the dungeon, this NPC will normally say stuff about air conditioning and its benefits, I think. But if your WTF value is 13 when playing through the game, then upon talking to this guy for the first time, he'll instead just say, I fucking love air conditioning. This doesn't really matter, by the way, but that one line was the sole reason why the game even got an M rating when it got ported to console. I just thought it was really funny. Hikikomori differences. So I sort of brought this up on tier 1, but in the Amori or Hikikomori route, the gameplay for Headspace will differ a little bit, mainly with adding and extending certain things like bosses and segments that weren't as long in the Sunny route, and also, like I said, in the real world segments, those parts are cut a lot as they're just Sunny doing his chores and then going back to sleep. Daddy Long Legs. Daddy Long Legs is an NPC that can be found in Pyrefly Forest, mainly in this part of the forest forest where he sort of instructs you on where to go, but also not really. That whole section is mainly a bit of him trying to tell Amori the truth vaguely, but not really succeeding.
proceeding. This NPC is relatively unknown in the realm of the community, but you will sometimes see mention of him online if you look around. Photo of someone familiar. One of the most common things to occur in the realm of WTF values. When your WTF value is at least 2, this photo of someone familiar will appear in a few locations in the game. It doesn't do much, but I'm sure you can probably guess who is in the picture. It, it's Bagel. Mystery Potion. So after defeating Humphrey in the Amori route, it's possible to obtain a Mystery Potion. How to get this is to feed Humphrey an item called the Giant Check, which you get after the Mr. Jossum boss fight, and a few other things as well. Medusa, one of the boss enemies in the game, will then give you the potion. To use the potion, the player can only be somewhere in Deep Well or Deeper Well, but if the potion is used, Amori turns into a girl. This doesn't last forever, and it goes away after going into a fight or looking into a mirror, but you can use it infinite times, but yeah, that's really all that it does. Kill Nuke and Boss Rush. So during the development of the console ports for Amori, Omocat took notice of the Kel Nuke strats people were coming up with and decided to do something funny. In the console ports, there is an extended boss rush which features the three friends, and in this fight, Kel can perform the Kel Nuke strat, and yes, it does as much damage as you think it does. Amori Afraid Emotion. This refers to an unused animation that showcases Amori in the afraid state. In the actual game, Amori can never become afraid but there was an animation that existed that showed Amori afraid at one point. It doesn't exist in the files of the final build, but it was in the files of an older beta build from a couple years before the game was officially released. Amori Reverie. Amori Reverie, sometimes shortened as just Reverie, is a mod of Amori that depicts Headspace after the events of the good ending. This mod is really ambitious and really well made, and it goes without saying, that this is one of the most well-liked and respected mods in the community so far. Although the mod is still in progress and only has, I believe, two chapters in it, it still looks very promising and it's a very neat mod that I recommend you guys go check out. What happened to Sunny in the Hikikomori route? By the end of the Amori route, Amori has basically taken over control of Sunny's entire body, including in the real world. This is evidenced by, by the end of the game, if you look at the mirror, it will be Amori in the reflection instead of Sunny. So this begs the question, what exactly happened to Sunny in this route? Well, the most conceivable explanation is Sunny repressed his memories of what happened so much here that he basically allowed Amori to control his entire body and probably lives out inside of his mind in headspace while Amori controls his body in the real world. Old character outline for headspace. So despite the entry on the iceberg sort of explaining this, I couldn't find anything for what the entry was actually talking about online. According to the iceberg, at some point the the character outlines in Headspace used to be black, but I don't know what this is actually talking about. Like, I've searched through every beta build, I think, and I couldn't find any difference for the Headspace outline at all, if there even is one. Maybe I'm just stupid, but if someone could just point it out to me in the comments, that'd be great. Blacker space represents repressed memories. I think this is a typo. Pretty sure it's supposed to say black space, not blacker space. Anyways, the idea is that black space and all the different segments within itself represent the memories Sunny has repressed. This makes sense as pretty much every encounter in black space shows some kind of uncomfortable or disturbing interaction, and all of this lies in black space below where headspace is. Amori Boy. Before Amori was made, Omocat made a series of webcomics known as Amori Boy. This line of comics started in December of 2011, and it depicted a much more different Amori in which he, unquote, faps and plays old games. Literally the line in the first comic strip. You can probably see what changed in the transition from Amori Boy to Amori. 69 Pranked. This entry is just referring to this OSC that plays during the work segments in the real world and during other quest stuff throughout the game. This OST actually plays a lot earlier in the game than this, but the placement here was definitely very intentional, especially with the name of the track being called Pranked. Yeah. This is an audio clip from a beta build of the game. In older builds, whenever you tagged one of the friends, they would actually make little sounds when they're tagged. This audio clip is what would play if you tagged Kel. This clip has since gone on to spawn into a bunch of memes in the community, because of course it did. Yeah. 
photo of someone familiar something variant. Pretty similar to the photo of someone familiar entry I talked about in tier 2, only this time this is a variation of that event that jump scares you upon interacting with it, because of course we gotta put that in the game, said Omocat, Omocat. Omari, this is an AU of the game where instead of Sunny having pushed Marie down the stairs and causing the events of the game, the roles are reversed and Marie is the one to accidentally kill Sunny, thus we get an alteration of the game where we see things from Marie's point of view and where yes the characters would have been a bit different as a result. A mod for this AU was being worked on but I think it actually got cancelled not too long ago because of demotivation. It's possible though that some other devs could pick up the mod and continue to work on it but yeah. Stop AAPI hate stream. In June of 2021 Omocat and some friends decided to make a charity stream to the Stop AAPI hate fund which is an organization aiming to stop racism targeting Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders. To my knowledge, a lot of the stream was just dumb fun stuff from the team. Kickstarter drama. When Omocat made the original Kickstarter, it followed up with a lot of drama. For starters, the original release date for the game that was intended was May of 2015. Yeah. 2015, over five years earlier than the actual release of the game. On top of this, many people weren't getting stuff when they initially promised, primarily because of how long development was taking, and it got to a point where many people thought it was a scam and were demanding refunds. It was not pretty to witness, needless to say. There's more detail to this one, so if you want to go check out that guy Glenn's video on the subject of Amori and his history of development, it's a really good video. Get on balloons, click at own risk. There's this really stupid gif that exists online, which features this animation of Sunny and Basil kissing with the caption, get on balloons, it's so dumb. R slash Amori memes. I think this explains itself. A subreddit for Amori memes. Certainly nothing bad can happen, right? Spirit Marie isn't Marie. So there's a theory out there explaining that Spirit Marie isn't actually Marie. In the scene of the game, a spirit version of Marie appears named Spirit Marie and talks to Amori before departing, but some people think that it's actually just black space trying to get Sunny closer to the truth and it isn't really Really, Marie talking to Sunny. Marie is home. This is a sequence of the game that is only accessible in a room in black space during the Sunny route. If you stand in this area over here for 143 seconds, then you'll be teleported to the sequence here. Handsome Hero. This is just a meme of this image of Hero that looks like this. It's cursed as hell. I don't like it. Fear Polaroid. In the console ports of the game, there are some events that can occur while playing through black space too. Some of these events are Polaroids and mirror events that are occur while exploring the various locations there. Actual Sweetheart Body Pillow. Yeah, so for a little while, Omocat was selling some Sweetheart Body Pillows, don't ask why, and yeah, these things sold out fast. Minecart Room Quotes. In Black Space 2, there is a room featuring a never-ending minecart, and in the room there is a pond, and leaving the room and interacting with this pond will leave you with all sorts of different quotes. ws.laptop.webm. In the files, there's a video file titled ws.laptop.webm, and initially it's pretty weird and confusing, however it's actually just a reference to a sitcom called Parks and Recreation. It sort of reminds me of that one time a FNAF fan game snuck in an entire episode of iCarly in their game. 143. 143 is a recurring number that appears throughout the game. 143 is often a number translating to I love you and quite a lot of instances of the number 143 appear in the game. Not to mention that sometimes instances of Marie saying I love you to Sunny are also seen. MadPat's Amori stream. When Amori released, MadPat ended up doing a live stream of the game calling it stuff like the next Earthbound and that got people pretty worked up, which is ironic that pissed people off by the way, because Omocat literally said Earthbound was an inspiration for the game. Anyways, MadPat didn't play much of the game, mainly because people just kept getting mad at him for literally no reason, I think. And honestly, maybe that's for the best. I honestly am afraid of the concept of an Amori game theory, no offense. Plus, plenty of other well-known people online have played Amori, so the game does get the recognition it deserves. Henry. In the files for Amori, some files for Hero are referred to as Henry and this is because Hero isn't actually Hero's real name, it's Henry. The game actually hints to Hero just being a nickname during this little scene in the game. RoboHeart Base 64 translations. So whenever RoboHeart speaks in the game, her messages are actually in Base 64. Translating these messages reveals some uh, kind of sad messages, saying stuff like, I just want to be your friend, and this is all a misunderstanding, and I am in need of affection and love. 
Yeah, Long Snout. Long Snout is an NPC that appears in black space. This is Long Snout, and uh, he do be looking down though. There's nothing known about this guy since he appears like twice in the game, arguably. He's just kind of a goofy goober. Bamori04.ogg. In the files for the game, there's 5.ogg files that most likely serve as background noise for a part of the game. The fourth of these files, titled Bamori04.ogg, sounds like either distorted screaming or crying or a distorted conversation. <laughs> Kill me. During the Red Maze area in Black Space 2, some people claim to see text that just says kill me, with some believing this is Sunny's beliefs that he is a monster after what he had done. Interactive website. In the official Amori website, clicking on this white door on the bottom right corner will lead to this little interactive section with a lot of the different areas in the game. It's pretty cool, it doesn't do much. It's a fun little thing to do if you happen to come across it. Abby in Amori Boy. Abby is a character who appeared in the Amori Boy comics. Abby was a character who is said to have comforted Amori Boy at times, and she's this like tentacle humanoid. In the actual game, Abby is this kind of shadowy being who was imprisoned to the abyss after doing something that Amori didn't like. Basil Tape. In the game, there is a tape of Basil having a breakdown, and once the player finishes the game, they learn that it's because of Basil witnessing the incident occur. However, there's leftover footage of this tape that isn't seen in game that exists in the files, showing Marie just in front of Basil after she was pushed off, and this was removed, most likely as it would have revealed too much about the truth in the game. Amoli. In Black Space 2, there's an end PC you can find and interact with called Amoli, who is a sprout mole that looks like Amori. Interacting with this NPC will lead to him asking you for money. That's about it. Toad B.U.P. In the OST Senior Fantasy, the composer for this track, Pedro Silva, decided to do a funny and make the Toad B.U.P. sound effect from Mario 64 as the main instrument for it. Why Kel was on the bridge in the Hikikomori route. In the Hikikomori route, after the two days left segment, as you were about to enter the deep well, normally Spirit Marie would appear and try to talk to Sunny, but on this route, Kel actually appears on the bridge that leads to the entrance to deep well. This could possibly be because at this point in the real world, Kel has given up on trying to get into contact with Sunny, and this prompted Headspace Kel in Sunny's head to try and cheer him up. Plus, Spirit Marie would try to normally talk to Sunny, hinting him towards the truth a bit, but at this point, that just didn't seem likely to happen, so instead, Headspace made Kel meet Amori at the dock. I am more iceberg. The entry is referring to this iceberg that looks like this. Yeah, I think it explains itself pretty well. Rainbow being cancelled for nearly playing Amori. So, Rainbow, a popular member of the Dream SMP, if you're familiar with that group of people, was going to play Amori, but a lot of his fans were begging him not to, saying stuff like the game was ableist, so as a result he ended up not playing it, and the guy on the iceberg was pretty upset about it too. Honestly though, I don't think we need Dream SMP people playing Amori. Like I said before, plenty of other well-known people have played the game, plus if someone is going to let people making the baseless accusations about the game deter them from playing it, then that's their own fault. Now you know. PNG. The entry is referring to this image of Sunny awake in bed. Unsurprisingly, this image doesn't appear in the game, it just exists in the files. The most likely scenario where this image could have been used in game is when Sunny discovered the truth while he was asleep. Perhaps this was an asset that would have played after Sunny learned the truth but was scrapped for some reason. Steak Earthbound reference. In the game, Sunny's favorite food is mentioned to be steak by his mother, and it could be assumed that it is. Well, in Earthbound, the main character Ness's favorite food is also steak. Not only do the two characters share a love for steak, but Amori was inspired by Earthbound, so it is a very intentional nod. Ice Cream Princess. Apparently, somewhere in development, Omokat and the dev team intended for Marie to be an ice cream princess. Apparently, the ice cream princess was going to play a more active 
active role in the story in contrast to Murray just sort of sitting at her picnic. The idea was cut pretty quickly it seems though. You did it! In Orange Oasis there is a maze-like segment that the player can navigate and at the end of this maze is a room with text saying you did it with a jump rope next to it. If you've played through the entire good ending it doesn't take much to figure out what this is a nod to. Space Boyfriend's Piano Foreshadowing In Space Boyfriend's room in Otherworld there is a piano that any of the kids can play depending on who is currently the leader in the group. Well, if you play the piano as Omori, he will play the white space theme on the piano, but give up pretty quickly upon messing it up a bit. This is a slight hint to the event of Sunny having given up on playing his violin, primarily because of the incident anyways, but also because of the mistakes he would make while playing. Space Boyfriend is trans. According to Jamie Lint, who was also known as Space Boyfriend at some point in time, Space Boyfriend was actually supposed to be trans. The reason why he isn't in the game is just because Omo Cat wasn't aware of it until Space Boyfriend was put into the game and everything. King Maverick. Some shitpost art from Omocat exists depicting the Maverick on top of a throne wearing a crown with Angel kneeling before him. I think stuff like this is the reason why I just absolutely love indie devs so much. They're not afraid to do stupid crap like this. Omori 2. On the semi-frequent Omori Facts page on Twitter, a post exists saying, Did you know? In the hashtag Summer Game Fest, Omori was announced to get an official set of spin-off games. The first of these is titled Omori 2, Still Working, which is said to be a side story based on the most popular character, the Maverick, set during the plot of Omori. Obviously, the post is satire, but I mean, I don't think I had to explain that to you. Sunny's Mom Simps. At some point on the Omori subreddit, there were a good number Number of people sipping for Sunny's mom for some reason. I think I joined the Amori grind about when this came to an end, so I don't even know, but I uh, don't think I want to know. Black Space Photo Album Descriptions. In the sequence where Sunny slowly unveils the truth, looking through the photo album that tells the truth looks like this. None of the descriptions are readable, they're all just scribbled out to be illegible, but in the files, there actually do exist descriptions for each image, which honestly, they probably should have left that in the game. I've seen a bit of speculation regarding Marie's death as a result of things not being as cohesive as they could have been because of a lack of descriptions in game. Gender bent Aubrey and Sunny. In early stages of the game, both Sunny and Aubrey would have had gender bent variants. The idea was that the player could customize the appearance of their character in the game, sort of like the beginning sequence in Deltarune, and depending on what gender the player chose, both Sunny and Aubrey's genders would be different. This was a feature that never made it into the final game, obviously, but assets for these gender bent variants still do exist in the game's files. Rowan. Before Basil was conceived, a more violent and ferocious version of him was made called Rowan. Rowan didn't receive much attention as he was quickly altered to be less violent and more on the calm side, as we see with Basil in the final game, and of course, his name was replaced with such by the time production for the game was over. Bowen. One of the Maverick siblings in the game is called Bowen, and this is a reference to Bowen, who we mentioned as a composer of some of the game's OSTs earlier. Quite a few NPCs and characters in Amori are actually referenced off of some devs for the game, like Kim and Vance are based off of a dev named Kimberly Vance, and M's, a one-off character appearing in Headspace, is based off of a dev also just named M's. Hanging friends in the Amori boss battle. In the Amori boss battle, the player will usually face a scripted death at around the fifth phase of the fight, but it is possible for the player to push towards a sixth phase, and what happens then? Well, the background will change, and if you look closely, you will see silhouettes of Aubrey, Kel, Hero, and Basil hanging, which could signify a potential thought of how Sunny might expect their friends to react to the truth. Ryan Milk Exploit At one point in the game, the Ryan Milk item actually had the capability to damage enemies, and supposedly it was pretty fucking deadly. As a result, it was altered and the Ryan Milk exploit was no longer possible from there on out. Kel in the Sprout Mole. This entry is referring to some dialogue at the beginning of the game where Kel and Aubrey are fighting and Aubrey mentions a mole on a part of Kel's body but is interrupted by Hero before she finishes. I don't want to say what part of his body the mole is
it's on because it's kind of weird, but the iceberg does give a little hint. Daddy Long Legs WTF Value. There's an event in Pyrofly Forest where if the WTF value is 9 or higher, then Daddy Long Legs will appear just out of view. It's pretty obscure and easy to miss, I'd imagine, so it's easy to see why many people would miss this on their playthrough, especially with the WTF value coming into play as well. Lost Forest Hanging Body. In the Lost Forest, which resides within Pyrefly Forest, if your WTF value is at least 3 and you go into the ending room, you will briefly see a hanging body resembling Marie near where the tree is here. Blue Girl. Blue Girl is an NPC that can be found in a room in black space. Blue Girl isn't always set to appear though, as her appearance is determined on if the player's WTF value is at 6 or higher. Interacting with Blue Girl will just cause her to say, don't talk to me. The most common explanation for her presence is that this is some kind of way that Sunny would think Marie would see him after the incident. Slime Girl's Controversy Shortly after Amori's release, there was some controversy that arose regarding Pedro Silva, also known as Slime Girls, Amori's main composer. There were claims that Pedro had been abusive towards his past partners. Despite Pedro initially dismissing the claims, he did later confirm them and has since tried to make things right, it seems, like donating 50% of the earnings they got from the Amori and Ublet soundtrack to organizations with goals of helping abuse victims. Pedro Silva is also often not credited for much, if not all, of the OST he made, so it seemed like this was a situation that mainly resolved itself in private. All Alter Hidden Message. In the audio file bamori04.ogg, which I talked about earlier on the iceberg, I mentioned how there was a possibility the audio was some sort of distorted conversation. Well, one of the probabilities people have come up with is that the conversation was regarding Sunny's broken violin, which is intriguing, but I don't think anything regarding this audio has really been proven yet. Fear of the Dark. So this one is kind of weird. The entry on icebergcharts.com says, this is a cut something boss, most likely having been replaced by something in the walls. In actuality, this is just an earlier rendition of Something in the Dark from the 2017 demo. The way it's explained on icebergcharts.com is really weird. Despite its code being overhauled for the final release, the graphics for the original boss fight can still be found in the game's files. 2019 build. So the 2019 beta build of Amori is quite fascinating. Loads of content from this build is up and available to view, but it seems the entire build isn't completely available for whatever reason. Most of the content in this build is mainly differences with that build in the current release of the game, but the full build doesn't seem to be readily available for some weird reason. However, that didn't stop dedicated Amori fans from documenting the hell out of this build. In fact, a Google Doc exists detailing everything, and I do mean everything that is known about this build, and it's a whopping 600 pages is long. It's definitely a rabbit hole in of itself, so go check it out if you want to. Be advised, this doc is quite lengthy. Herosaurus. Herosaurus is an NPC that can be found in Black Space 2, and before you ask, yes, the NPC is literally just Hero's head on a dinosaur. This is the point of the game where we're shown just how badly mental health can affect someone. Something original sound. We all know the something sound effect. It's iconic, but the question is, where did it originate from? Well, the original the original audio clip that the sound was ripped from comes from this Disneyland Euro video, and if you listen to it, it sounds pretty similar. Amori namesake. So where Sunny got the term Amori from is from two possible things. Obviously, like I said earlier, Amori comes from the term Hikikamori, but the brand of piano that Marie played has the word Amori etched into it, as seen in the game. So the name Amori that Sunny came up with could have come from one of those two things. Black Playground Idol. In the Black Playground area in Black Space 2, if the player stands still there for 42 seconds, Amori begins to play some unique unique idle animations that cannot be triggered anywhere else, including laying down, sitting down, and clenching his stomach similarly to how he would after having stabbed himself. Also worth mentioning, I think, but the number 42 usually symbolizes the meaning of life, so uh, make of that what you will. 
Color significance theory. It's safe to say Amori has a lot of symbolization, but there's a theory out there that each color that the characters are often attributed to has a specific meaning. So for example, Kale's main color is orange, which symbolizes joy and excitement. Hero's color is blue, which symbolizes sadness and truth, makes sense. And Basil's color is green, which symbolizes change and growth, or maybe the refusal to in Basil's case anyways. There's a post I found that explains this theory in all the symbolization pretty well. I'll link it in the description if you guys want to check it out. Lily of the Valley. The Lily of the Valley is a plant that is seen a lot throughout the game. It's a plant that Basil uses to describe Marie as it helps ward off evil spirits and helps people see a brighter future. On the iceberg though, it's apparently referring to if you search up Amori on Spotify, you'll find some songs on an album titled Lily of the Valley, which is interesting I guess. Amori was going to be a graphic novel. Before Amori was conceived to be a fully fledged video game, Omocat was originally planning to make it into a graphic novel. However, shortly after starting this, Omakat wanted people to more freely explore the world that she wanted to make for Amori and ditched the graphic novel and decided to make Amori into a video game. Shark Plane and Vast Forest. In the Kickstarter, a shark plane enemy from the other world is seen being fought in the vast forest. There's nothing really interesting to note here, just kind of cool to see really early beta content like this, I don't know. Hey, a kid, wanna buy some anime? In the neighbor's room, there was at one point going to be a shopkeeper there, and he would say to you, hey, a kid, wanna buy some anime? And then give you options to buy some state-of-the-art anime. Haunted House. There's an elaborately cut segment of the game where Amori and the friends are taken to Basil's empty house that is now rumored to be a haunted house by Marie. There's a video of the sequence and its entirety uploaded to YouTube by Napkin. Yes, that's her name. So if you want to see it in its entirety, go check it out here. Cake. Alright, hear me out you guys. The entry on this iceberg says this is referring to a supposed old version of the Hangman game where instead of keys, you collect cake. Here's the problem though. I cannot find any evidence of this online at all. Maybe Omocat just said this in an interview and I just haven't found it yet but regardless I did find something I could at least discuss and it does pertain to the hangman game in an earlier demo build there was a version of the hangman game where instead of keys you collected these things called black letters and these are what they looked like pretty cool right Amori Boy reference in console release announcement. On a post announcing that Amori was going to be ported to the Switch, the picture under this post is actually a direct reference to the first Amori Boy webcomic, the one where he says something quite comedic. Unused skills. Within the programming for the game, there are a series of unused skills that never ended up making it into the game. All of these come from Amori and go as follows. Hide. Foes cannot target Amori for one turn. Pickpocket, Amori tries to steal an item, and Deep Breath removes emotion. If a second or third stage emotion is removed, Amori recovers 50% heart. These skills were all probably cut because unlike all of Amori's other skills, they only directly benefited him and they weren't real attacks or anything like that. Face Cluster. So in the files for the game exists this asset. This image is known as Face Cluster and is an amalgamation of all the Headspace characters' portraits merged into one. Although this specific asset never appears in the game itself, a smaller version of this image does appear in one of the sketchbook drawings in Black Space. Tag Skip. There's a glitch that exists in the game where by tagging and untagging your friend in specific spots, you can actually skip certain parts of the game. This is a tactic that's usually used in speedruns for the game, obviously. Female Kel. In the files for the game, there exists a sprite sheet for a female Kel in the game. No, I'm not kidding. Additionally, a more cat made some art on April Fools and posted this, a female Kel drawing. Do you want to take a guess on how people reacted to that? Yeah, they went bonkers. Omocat controversies. Throughout Omori's development, Omocat got caught in a few controversies. The primary controversy Omocat got caught in 
was improper communication through her Kickstarter, mainly with letting backers and whatnot get updated with information. While some of the criticism against Omocat here was valid, I think something people needed to remember was that this was her first time making a game at all, and a lot of it was severely overblown in my opinion. Basil Border in Deepwell. In the console exclusive versions of the game, there is a border that accompanies the game. Since the game's aspect ratio on PC is 4x3, the game has a border along with a background for a console releases. Well, you can choose borders that are themed off of the characters, including Basil, but once you get to Deepwell, you can't select the Basil border at all, which is foreshadowing of the friend slowly forgetting about Basil throughout the last part of the game. Sick Boy. Sick Boy is a character that Omocat drew sometime in 2014. The character is sometimes speculated to be the first draft of Sunny, and despite the similarities, this is something that still hasn't been confirmed yet. It is entirely possible though, since Amori was being developed by the time Sick Boy was conceived. Taco. Taco is a character who originally appeared in the Amori Boy comics. She is a monochrome humanoid with tentacles who makes a couple brief appearances in the Amori Boy comics, usually hard to spot or hidden underneath a separate post. Taco appears in the actual game, however, and can be seen in the beach area in black space, albeit this one time and not having any actual dialogue, aside from making a weird noise when you interact with her. Yuni. Yuni is another old Amori character who appears in the treehouse section of Black Space. Yuni is a scorched figure with a giant eye and squiggly hair around his head. Nothing much is inferred about Yuni as interacting with him in the treehouse just makes a glitchy event play and he disappears. Mido. Yet another old Amori character. This time she looks like this. She's a girl entirely monochrome, again, who kind of looks like Sweetheart. It's possible to run into Mido in the town area in Black Space. Big surprise there. And like Yuni, she'll disappear upon interacting with her, so that's about it. Dorian Gray. So Dorian Gray is the subject of the book titled The Picture of Dorian Gray. Shocker, I know. The book depicts a painting that is made of him by a friend called Basil Hollard. Hopefully that name should ring a bell to you. Even more evidence to suggest Basil being named after this friend comes from the 2018 demo where in this room you can find some dialogue saying various books by Dorian Gray. Why they cut this isn't exactly clear. Maybe they just thought this whole sequence didn't work with the game, which yeah, I guess makes sense. Basil Knife Spray. Similar to how Amori can stab himself inside of white space and black space, there is actually an animation of Basil stabbing himself in the real world similar to this. Well, not really. See, the animation is there, and it exists in the files and everything, but it's not actually finished. The animation actually abruptly stops before the knife actually intersects Basil. I said actually too many times there. Despite this not being used, it's still in the files, and there's even a nighttime edition of this animation that is also unfinished. Wowee. Photo negative basil spray. Also in the files, you can find this photo negative basil spray. What would it have been used for? Who knows? It probably would have been used for a room in black space, so yeah. Via Mori. In the game, there are animations of Sunny playing the violin. But in the files, there's actually animations of Amori playing the violin instead, which go unused. Amori showed up merch. Around 2013, right before Omocat started Amori, she made a t-shirt with the character having a heavy resemblance to Amori with the word Shoda on it. If you don't know what Shoda is, it's a term usually used to represent attraction to a young boy. You can probably see where this is going. Of course, when Twitter discovered this like eight years after this was even done, they went all crazy and started calling Omocat like a pedophile and stuff like that, even though, like I said, this was eight years ago. And let me tell you, jokes about Shoda and stuff like that were a lot more common in 2013. Also, you know, people can change in eight years. That's a concept I don't think is very common amongst Twitter. Lost Amori comics. Ooh boy, me loves some lost media. So ultimately, some of the Amori Boy comics Omocat made have been lost. I can't find much documentation covering these lost strips online, not even on the Lost Media Wiki, but the Amori Boy comics are relatively unknown in the realm of the community, let alone any of its lost media, and I 100% believe some of the comics are lost. I mean, they did it back to 2011 after all. Amori didn't exactly take off until the game started being made, so it's easy to see some of the this content having been lost. 
PS Vita and 3DS ports. On the Kickstarter, one of the milestones which ended up being reached was a promise for a PS Vita and 3DS port of Amori. However, do some simple research, they don't exist. What happened? Well, on December 20th of 2020, a post was made regarding these ports, right before the game released on PC actually, and stated the PS Vita and 3DS ports were actually turned into console ports ultimately. Still though, what these ports looks like before the ship to console is not known at all, and we we probably won't ever know. October 7th, 2022 announcement. On October 7th, 2022, Umulcat made an official announcement regarding theft of some of the Amori artwork and pieces of merchandise. Yeah, this was an actual problem that was going on around to a degree that it warranted an official response. Basically, some jackasses stole official Amori merchandise and were illegally selling them, and Umulcat was basically telling people not to buy the merch from these guys for obvious reasons. Additionally, there was an Amori art exhibition going on around this time and some even bigger jackasses stole literal concept art that was being showcased there. Omocat ended off the announcement saying that if people knew anything about the stolen pieces to get into contact with them, as I'm sure you can tell, this information does not please me. A moly is just an advertising ploy. Doesn't it make sense? Anytime you see the scrunkly, don't you just want to give your entire life savings to Omocat? Do it, do it, do it, do it. The real canonical ship is Humphrey X Air Conditioning. I mean, this makes sense too, right? Humphrey's love for air conditioning is so powerful that he dropped the only swear in game to sway his love for it. Hero Marie has got nothing on the ship. Okay, that's enough of the meme entries. Let's actually talk about some more interesting stuff, like stay away. In an earlier build of the game, you could fight an enemy named Dorothy, and this enemy used to say stuff like stay away and be scared of the player. This was eventually changed. Why? I'm not too sure, but it's still kind of interesting to think about. Blackmail. Blackmail could be referring to a couple of things. In the game, it's possible to blackmail one of the NPCs through some interactions in Sproutwool Village. Without going into too much detail, you essentially blackmail someone for the sake of a side quest, which is kind of fight. I mean, Hero thought so too, but that didn't stop the others. However, the description on icebergcharts.com says that blackmail was the original way to unlock the Hangman game, probably from an earlier demo build or something, I don't know. You hear someone crying. On two days left during the night, you interact with Hero in the piano room, and upon leaving and going back in, you catch Hero on the piano in distress. However, in the 2019 build, this night would end differently. Instead of being able to enter the room again, upon leaving and interacting with the door to the room, you instead see text saying you hear someone crying. Daddy Long Legs Unused WTF Value So if you glitch yourself into Pyrefly Forest during the prologue, since you can't enter Pyrefly Forest until 3 days left and your WTF Value is at 13, you'll see Daddy Long Legs at Pyrefly Forest. Why this glitch happens isn't really known, but it's kinda cool I guess. A pink sunrise, I'm just gonna quote this from the iceberg, a sunburn fanfic, mostly non-pornographic. Mostly. Yeah. Where? Where is your violin? Some unused text that was gonna be used in a black space room can be found in the files. In this room, looking into this box will reveal some text saying, you hear your mom crying. Where? Where is your violin? This is sort of used as an idea that Sunny's mom knew about the truth all along. Taco in a Mori Boy. I talked about Taco on the previous tier, but Taco is that tentacle girl. This entry is just referring to how Taco was originally in the Mori Boy comics, which I already mentioned. 99 letter rooms. This is a series of rooms in black space for if you happen to get all 99 letters. Yeah, all 99, even though only 26 exist in game. Even so, these rooms don't even exist in the final build, but they can be found in the 2019 build. So by hacking your way into that build, it's revealed these rooms are what was meant to be the original black space sequence for Amori. However, the order is non-linear, which contradicts the sequence in the final game being in a linear fashion. Basil's something. So we know about Sunny something. The shape of his something represents the figure that Sunny saw of Marie hanging on the day of the incident. Well, Basil has a something too, but what exactly does it represent? Well, one of the more common theories is that Basil's something, which is like a deep pit with a mouth, represents Basil's guilt quite literally eating him alive or something. The reason Amori hates tofu. In the 2018 build of Amori, it's revealed at some point that Basil's favorite food is actually tofu, and Amori in contrast, hates tofu. Well, knowing Amori and Headspace Basil's relationship and what happened, that could serve as a potential reason why Amori hates tofu so much. It's all just dumb speculation, though. 
eye for an eye. This is another theory that the Iceberg creator came up with. During the fight with Basil, Sunny obviously loses his eye, but it's possible that he having lost his eye has some connection with the eye that something has or something only having one eye. I personally don't believe it means anything at all, as it would have had a lot more symbolization or something more concrete if it did. Empty Friend. Empty Friend is basically just another name for Uni. The Iceberg says that they were going to be an old enemy and were cut but I can't find any evidence of this online. Plus, Empty Friend is basically just uni, so all I said about him applies to this entry too, I think. And finally, there will never be a sequel. I mean, of course the iceberg ends with a there will never be a sequel entry. I mean, yeah, that's sort of obvious. Amori took six whole years to develop, and it was a strenuous process it looked. Making a sequel would not only be unnecessary, in my opinion, but also grueling. So, yeah. And that was the Amori iceberg. It was pretty cool. If you guys like this video, make sure to subscribe, do all that fancy jazz. I'll try to talk more about interesting stuff on this channel, even if it isn't necessarily iceberg related. So yeah, that's about it. Amori is funny and depressing at the same time. I'll see you guys later. Goodbye.